Hello everyone, welcome to Genius Lab and I am the curator for this channel. Today we're going to look about the topic stem cell. Yep, you're right, this is an academic video. But don't close the video yet, because to make things interesting, I got my slaves to share the information with you all. First up, we have Devin, next Hazika, Nurin, Atira, and Sandhya. So what are you waiting for? Let's jump right in. Hi guys and girls. Hi Devin. How are you all? We are not good at all. Whoa, whoa. Honestly, in this channel? Hey, no curator. We are just fine. Hmm, that's good to hear. Do you all know the topic for today? Mm, stem cells, I guess. Good. What is stem cell, Devin? I know, it's a plant cell, right? NANI! Oh my! No, no. Plant cell stem, what? Stem cells are cells that do not have a specific role. They differentiate to form other types of cells with a specific structure and function. Sounds interesting. Where do these cells originate from? We have two main sources of stem cell. The first one is adult stem cell. It's also known as somatic stem cell. Its function is for growth and repair. The second source is embryonic stem cell, where it is produced during the early stage of pregnancy in about three to five days, and it is produced by the blastocyst, which is about four to five days. Nice, Devin. But here are two more sources, and these sources are considered as minor sources. Now, can anyone tell me about this stem cell research? Sandhya? No, it's too hard. Hey, tell that polite to Sandhya. You don't want to make him mad. 30 years ago, scientists discovered a way on how to derive an embryonic stem cells from mouse embryos. So it is called a human embryonic stem cells. And it is created for IVF, in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization is a production process that is used by married couples who have problems to have children. So you guys must really wanted to know how this stem cell research is developed, right? So doctor and scientists actually really hope that stem cell studies can actually develop a fully understand about how the disease occurs. So by watching a stem cell mature to cell, they can actually fully understand how the diseases occur. Wow. Excellent explanation. It doesn't look that hard, Sandhya. Tell her, curator, tell her. You stay there, miss. You're up next. How stem cells are classified? Stem cells are categorized according to their potential to differentiate into other types of stem cells. Okay, now all of you name one type of stem cells each. Quick. Antipotent, pluripotent, multipotent, oligopotent, unipotent. I only said quick, not lightning fast. Never mind, the audience can read it from the infographic beside you all. Uh, what does these words actually mean? What? You don't know? Tell her, Matira, tell her. So, totipotent stem cells are the stem cells that can differentiate into all types of stem cells. And examples of totipotent stem cells are the cells that start to appear at the early stages of the zygote development. Pluripotent stem cells are the stem cells that can turn into almost any type of stem cells. And examples for these are the embryonic stem cells. Multipotent stem cells are stem cells that can differentiate into closely related family of stem cells. Examples for these are hematopoietic stem cells like for example, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelet. Oligopotent stem cells are the stem cells that can differentiate into only a few types of stem cells. And examples of oligopotent stem cells are human lymphoid and myeloid stem cells. Now for unipotent. 
compose and stem cells. So these are the stem cells that can only differentiate into one type of stem cell, which is their own. And they can also renew themselves. And examples for these are adult muscle stem cells. Any more questions, Devin? Yes, curator. What's the use of stem cells? <sighs> Wait, Sandhya will explain. Uh. Huh? Why me? Just do it, lazy boy. Hmm. Okay, hope I'll get some rewards for it. <laughs> Many stem cells can take on the roles of any types of cells and could save lives. First of all, stem cells can treat cardiovascular diseases. Blood vessels in laboratory mice create dirt using human cells. The networks of the blood perfused vessels had formed within two weeks. So it could treat people with cardiovascular and also vascular diseases. Moreover, stem cells also can treat brain diseases. The damaged brain tissue can be replenished using stem cells. It also could treat Alzheimer's and also Parkinson's diseases in near future. Moreover, stem cells can help in cell deficiency therapy. Heart damage can be repaired by repopulating the heart with healthy tissue. For type 1 diabetic patients, they will be receiving pancreatic cells to replace insulin producing cells. Good job, but no rewards. <coughs> what? Moving on. Seems like stem cells has a lot of benefit, hasn't it? Who agrees with me? Raise your hands. Nani? Hmm. Seems like one person disagrees. Why, Nurin? Yeah, but we do have some controversies regarding stem cells. Do you guys know there is an argument where people are against the use of embryos in stem cells as it would destroy human blastocysts and fertilize egg can be developed into human. Another issue is about the hybrid of humans and animals. As we all know, stem cell research involves inserting human cells into animals such as mice and rats. Some argue that this will lead to a creation of an organism that has part of it. There are a lot of problems involving stem cell research, but no pain, no gain. So we have to argue that there are a lot more um, benefits regarding stem cells than the problems. Moreover, researchers can find the cause of cell mutation that causes cancer and congenital diseases, and so they can find a cure for these diseases. Also, stem cells are really helpful in the development of new drugs. See, we can use stem cells to test the drugs so we don't have to use human specimens because if we use human specimens, they might get very severe side effects or maybe short-term or long-term illnesses and we will never know. So this is why, even though there are problems in stem cell research, but the benefits outweigh those problems. Stem cell is not only useful for potential therapies but also for research purposes. Scientists found that by switching a particular gene on or off can cause it to differentiate. By that knowledge, they can actually know the illnesses and conditions that don't even have the cure yet. Well, since stem cells has its pros and cons, both positive and negative effects must be accounted to reduce potential problems and risk. Don't you think so? Yes, Curator! Okay, looks like we have come to the end of our discussion today. So, take the day off and I'll see you guys next time. But before you all leave, say something to the audience. Please rescue us from his clutches. Well, that's nothing. Now, scram! Phew! Finally, got rid of them. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a thumbs up for this video and subscribe to the channel for more immersive content. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Bye.